let's get straight into this one. Connor's the man of the house presents a theme of innocence, temptation, guilt, responsibility, control, resilience, redemption, acceptance, and responsibility. Did I say responsibility and guilt? Now, taken from a collection of stories, we find that O'Connor gives a first person narrator called the Gus Sullivan. Now, Sullivan is reflecting on an incident in his life when he was only 10 years old. So once more, it's an adult. It's not child narration as such. It's an adult who is reflecting on an event in his life when he was a child. Now, after we read the story, we realize that O'Connor is exploring quite deeply the theme of responsibility. How responsible is a child? And how responsibility affects the events that happens in a child's life. Gus takes on different occasions where he wants to act as if he's older than his years. We see where he lights the fire in the house. He attempts to do the shopping for his mother. He attempts to go to what we would call the, the, the pharmacy, the dispensary, to get the medication for his mother. But we also notice that while he is doing this, while he's at the, the Gus, sorry, while Gus is at the dispensary, he ends up consuming all of his mother's medication because he is influenced, his responsibility, his ability to be responsible is re influenced by a young girl. Now, he begins to feel guilty and he struggles with his conscience in so many ways. It is also interesting to note that the author, O'Connor, looks unfavorably on most of the male characters in the story. Throughout the entire story, he does. We talk about the man in the bar who he sees as not being only drunk, but an irresponsible buffoon. There is no real connection with the real world here. And this may be a deliberate attempt by O'Connor to attack the male-dominated society that he lived in in Ireland at the time that the story was written. We see where Sullivan Gus is tempted by the young girl at the dispensary to drink his mother's medication. Now, this is important, not only because it is the first occasion in the story where Gus is not responsible. He lets his, himself down. He wants to be responsible, but guess what? He's not as responsible as he thought he is. Now, in this instance, we realize that Frank O'Connor may be alluding to the biblical story of Adam and Eve and the apple, where the medication becomes the apple and Eve becomes that little girl who makes sure that he loses his responsibility. No, it's the allusion gets to the Garden of Eden in many ways. Now, before taking the medication, we see Gus's concentration in different ways and his whole desire, his whole need to do the right thing for his mother. And these were held very high for him. He held these in high regards. Now, things were going very well for him in so many ways. And of course, we saw that he was quite responsible, but he becomes so wrapped up, so caught up with the girl that he begins to lose his concentration. And again, we want to think that it is an allusion to the Garden of Eden and Adam and Eve. And there he regret, he forgets his intentions and what his intentions really are. Now, one must note that for such a young boy, the guilt is a lot. It's too much. It's unbearable for Sullivan in so many ways because here he feels as though he has let his mother down. He also feels guilty because he knows that he won't be able to pay for a candle in the church. No, he has spent the money on sweets for the girl. And the fact that Sullivan is unable to say his prayer and light that candle in that cathedral, that church, is important as Frank O'Connor is creating the framework for the church and the practice of paying for prayers. Now, the only thing that we see as the reader that stops Gus from going into the cathedral and lighting that candle is the fact that there is an expectation from the church at times that when an individual pays, they pay for their prayer. And this is probably a misconception that Sullivan had, at a child, had as a child. Something which Sullivan has been taught, yes, or maybe he has just observed. And this is how we realize that the church is also important. Religion comes at the forefront of reading this. One can note that the fact that Sullivan respects the principles of the church by paying for his prayers, and because he doesn't have that money anymore, he doesn't go to the cathedral to light the candle. The fact is that he has no money. 
Now, if anything, if we were to really look at it, we could assume that Gus begins to feel trapped by the conditions that comes with being a religious, that comes from the church. These conditions would make it look as though the church is more about making money than, more, than, than so much of, of allowing an individual to feel as if, okay, the church can help you. It is also possible that O'Connor sees the candle and the prayer as a symbol of hope because many people believe in prayer and believe in the hope, have the hope that the prayers will get you through. And so we see that Sullivan presents this to us, O'Connor presents this to us, that the candle and the prayer is the hope for redemption. Now, if this is the case, we realize that at the end of the story, Gus still sees that miracle. Sullivan still sees that miracle that has happened. His mother gets better without the need for the prayer or the need for the candle, which goes in contrast, yes. And that's a contrasting idea that we may want to deal with later on in later lessons. His mother is better. And we realize as the readers that O'Connor again could be putting a spotlight on the church and therefore he questions the role of prayers and the role of the candle and paying for these as um, an influential part of our lives. No, it can happen when there, need, there is a need, according to Colliv Sullivan, um, sorry, O'Connor's thoughts and ideas, but that also hope could come through redemption. The fact that Gus spends the money and could not pray for could not pay for prayer and the fact that his mother gets better means that there is also forgiveness there is also forgiveness from god there is also forgiveness from the church is though gus's mother is is that gus's mother is pregnant yes but she does not judge him when he returns from the dispensary she does not become angry she does not become upset because he had spent the money foolishly she instead takes care of him and that is a strong form of love that the author tries to present as well thinking of gus she wants to help him more than helping herself we also find too that the mother is very strong she is resilient she bounces back because when gus first realizes that his mother is sick she's still smiling through her pain she's still smiling through that sickness and so we realize that the mother's love is very strong that she wants her child to be good to be better not because she is sick but because she loves him and despite her illness she wants to rise above this to ensure that her child is still good now this is important as it also suggests that gus's mother doesn't want him to be upset and so she shows him that she is tough on the outside she may not be well enough she may not be um in she may not have it in terms of financial but she doesn't want him to become upset and so she presents herself as someone who life has not beaten she has risen above her struggles her she is resilient in so many ways now, regardless of the poor conditions that they live in, she shows us, she teaches us as readers that there is a strength despite your circumstances. It is also important to note that when Gus takes control of the situation, when his mother is sick and cannot get out of bed, rather than we see Gus making a note of what he needs to get, it is the mother who still does this. And so we see the strength of the woman shown there. The strength of the woman is very important to understanding the story, that despite the hardships that women may face, we find that the mother stands strong and she does what she can do despite the fact that she is down. No, Gus doesn't seem to understand it at first, and he doesn't seem to realize that he is dictating or ordering his mother in this case. And yes, it is Gus Sullivan who tells her what to do. No, right here, we realize that the male, in many ways, is the dominant figure in a relationship, in a family, because Gus takes control. And even though the mother is sick, we also realize that O'Connor is probably presenting to us the ideals of a man's strength, a man's ability to want to take care of the, we the weaker gender. Yes, and I put weaker in, co in quotation marks there. The way that they will take orders from anything in trousers is important. It is important because the reader realizes that O'Connor makes, makes light of this. It is funny about women, the way they'll take orders from anything in trousers. Now, O'Connor may be highlighting the fact that women 
um, how dominating women have been by men, how dominated women have been by men at the time when the story was written. In fact, he may have been suggesting at the same time that despite a strength of a woman, that the men conti continued to dominate them. The end of the story is rather interesting. For Sullivan, there is a miracle that comes when he wakes up and he sees that his mother is better. It is also noticeable. We also see that Sullivan has redeemed himself because even though he had not paid for that prayer, we realize that his mother had gotten better. Now, he, he tells his mother the truth about what happened, and that is cred credible, and that is important to note. He hides nothing from his mother, which shows you that they do have a strong relationship. And if anything, we realize that Gus Sullivan is very close to his mother. We also realize, too, that he is quite too young to take on the role of a man, to, be, to hold that responsibility, and that it is better for someone else, his mother in this case, to take on that role. He, of course, makes his attempt at being responsible because I assume that that is what was expected at the time of male to be responsible. And though good natured, of course, he was not successful. He fell victim to temptation. And because he fell victim to temptation, he suffered through his guilt. And because of the practices of the church in paying for prayers, he was unable to say the prayers that he wanted to, to say for his mother. Now we realize too, at the end of all the story, we realize that Gus would not function effectively in the adult world because he is a child. He also probably doesn't realize that the world itself in which he lived is dysfunctional. Now, as a reader, we want to decide by ourselves why we would consider the world to be dysfunctional. But Gus appears to be happy. And once more, he becomes a child and he wants to do childish things. Because sometimes you have to learn that being responsible is something that you don't want to assume too early in life. You want to be well equipped for it. And the fact that the girl could have tempted him means then that Gus never fully understood the complexities of life. And though he lives with his guilt, he realizes though that in the end, things got a little bit better. Thank you so much for watching. One more. Um, if, you have, if you have listened to the end of it, please don't forget to subscribe. Hit your bell buttons as well because there will be more uploads on the short stories coming quite soon to you.